Hello and welcome to the Maths 2 component of the online BSc program on data science and programming. In this video, we are going to talk about the Hessian matrix and local extrema. So, we have studied the notion of critical points for f x y and uh, in a previous video, we also studied the Hessian matrix which consisted of the second order partial derivatives placed in a square matrix. So, in the context of f x y, this will be a 2 by 2 matrix. So, let us recall first uh, what was the second derivative test for a one variable function. So, suppose you have a function of uh, one variable defined in the domain d, a point a in d is a critical point if either the function f is not differentiable at that point or f prime is 0. And uh, now, if the function is twice differentiable, we applied something called the second derivative test. So, the second derivative test told us uh, the nature of the critical points. So, the test said the following, if a is a critical point and if the double derivative is positive, then this point is a local minimum. If it is a critical point and the double derivative is negative, then it is a local maximum. And if it is a critical point and the double prime is 0, then the test is inconclusive. So, we, we do not know uh, what happens in that case. Fine. So, uh, this was the uh, second derivative test for functions of one variable. Now, we would like to have something analogous for uh, higher order meaning functions, multivariable functions um, and indeed the Hessian matrix is what is going to allow us to do that. So, let us first recall critical points for multivariable functions. So, if we have a scalar valued multivariable function defined in our domain d in R n, then a point a in d is called a critical point if either the gradient is 0 uh, or the gradient does not exist. So, the main point here was that every local extremum meaning a local maximum or a local minimum was a critical point. So, every local extremum is a critical point and uh, what we want to do is once we get the collection of critical points, we want to identify which of these are local maxima, which of these are local minima and if possible if uh, which of these are saddle points. So, we know that not all uh, critical points are local extrema because uh, there are things called saddle points and uh, the saddle point is exactly a critical point such that the gradient exists and uh, the gradient is 0, but A is not a local extrema. So, let us now see how we can use the Hessian in order to uh, classify these critical points. So, again if f x y is a function defined in the domain D and A is a critical point such that the first and second order partial derivatives are continuous in an open ball around A. So, this is a very important uh, hypothesis. In particular, this hypothesis allows us to uh, apply Clairaut's theorem and say that the mixed partials are going to be equal. Okay. So, then the Hessian test can be applied to check the nature of the critical point A and what is the test? If the determinant of the Hessian matrix at that point is positive and the uh, uh, second order partial with respect to x uh, at that point is positive, then it is a local minimum. If the determinant is positive and the second order partial with respect to x is negative, then it is a local maximum and if the determinant is negative, then it is a saddle point and if the determinant is 0, then we do not know the test is inconclusive. Okay. So, this is a slightly more involved test as you can see than the second derivative test for one variable functions because here you have to write down the matrix, compute, uh, compute its determinant and also check for an entry. Okay. Let us uh, so let us uh, uh, try to understand how to keep these uh, in mind. Suppose I forget the Hessian test, right? how do I remember what happens? Well, let us look at these functions. So, these functions we already know what, what the situation is. So, you have x squared plus y squared, we know how this function looks, it is like a bowl and uh, 0, 0 is a global minimum. So, that this is something you just know from the fact that squares are positive. So, 0, 0 is a local minimum, you know is a global minimum in fact and so the, the test uh, hopefully should uh, tell us that. Let us see if that happens. Similarly, minus x squared minus y squared is the same thing inverted down. So, now 0 0 is a local maximum, in fact a global maximum, but in particular a global uh, local maximum. Similarly, x squared minus y squared 
zero zero was a saddle point. This was the prototype of how a saddle point looked like. And then x to the power four plus y to the power four. Uh, here uh, the the uh, again zero zero is a uh, local, in fact, a global minimum. But uh, since it's the fourth power, something strange happens. So we so these are the four prototype examples to keep in mind, and these uh, so each of these will correspond to one of the four uh, conditions that we had before. So first, let's compute the gradient. So gradient of f here is two x comma two y, uh, and uh, from here we can compute the Hessian. So the Hessian is two zero zero two. Okay, very nice Hessian. Okay, so from here we get that the only critical point is. So if I set my gradient to zero, then the only critical point is zero zero, and uh, the Hessian is actually independent of the point. So the Hessian matrix for zero zero is in particular two zero zero two, and now let's apply the test. So let's compute determinant of this matrix. So the determinant of this matrix is four. So it's positive. So good. So we know already that we are not in the inconclusive case, and we know that we don't have a saddle point uh, because for saddle point the determinant will be negative. So now it will depend on the value of the uh, one one term. So here the one one term, which is f x x, is two. This is positive. So therefore it is a meaning zero zero is a Local minimum, and this is exactly what we uh, knew already by inspection, because x squared plus y squared is always a positive function uh, with its only zero at zero zero. Okay, we can do the same thing for minus x squared minus y squared. So here, the uh, gradient is minus two x comma minus two y. If I set it to zero, that gives me that the only critical point is. <coughs> Zero zero, and uh, the Hessian here. That means you take the partial derivatives of, you take minus two uh, x and take its partial derivatives. So that's minus two and zero, and then you take the minus two y and take its partial derivatives, which is zero and minus two. So notice what I did here. By definition, actually, I should have taken partial of this gradient with respect to x. So that's minus partial of. Minus two x and then partial of minus two y, but I just took partials of uh, minus two x in the first row and partials of minus two y in the second. And the reason that worked is because I know it's a symmetric matrix from Clairaut's theorem. Okay, so again this uh, Hessian has uh, is independent of whatever choice. So in particular, meaning of whatever point. So in particular, at zero zero, you get the same Hessian. And now let's see what happens. So the, again, the determinant is. Uh, Non-zero, it's four, so it's uh, greater than zero. So what that tells us is one, it's non-zero. That means it's not in the inconclusive situation, and two, that it's uh, positive, which means it's either a local maximum or a local minimum, and that will be determined by uh, whatever happens to f x x, and f x x means the one one th entry. So at zero zero, this is minus two, which is negative. So therefore, zero zero is a local. Maximum and this indeed conforms to uh, what we already know that this is a global maximum. In fact, okay, let's do x squared minus y squared. Again, if you compute the gradient, this is two x comma minus two y. If you set it to zero, you get that the critical point is uh, x is zero and y is zero. So that's zero comma zero. Let's find the Hessian. So for the Hessian, you Differentiate two x with respect to x and with respect to y. So with respect to x, it's two. With respect to y, it's zero. You take minus two y, differentiate with respect to x and y. With respect to x, it's zero. With respect to y, it's minus two. Aha! And now you can see it's uh, a bit different than earlier. Of course, again it's independent of the point. So at zero zero, also you have the same Hessian. And now what is the determinant? So this determinant is. Two times minus two minus zero, so that's minus four, which is negative, and you stop right here because once the determinant of the Hessian is negative in the two by two situation, then 
uh, we know that this is a saddle point and indeed this is something that we uh, have seen already. So, this is a saddle point okay. and finally, let us do the example of x to the power 4 plus y to the power 4 find the gradient 4 x cube comma 4 y cube set it to 0 that means x cube is 0 y cube is 0 that means x is 0 y is 0. So, the only critical point is 0 0 find the hessian. So, now the hessian actually involves functions. So, it is 12 x squared 0 and then 0 12 y squared, but what happens at 0 0. So, at 0 0 the hessian matrix actually is 0 0 0 0 right and in particular that means that the determinant of the hessian is 0 and therefore, this we cannot conclude anything from the test uh, therefore, the test is inconclusive and this is a warning that uh, that uh, even for simple functions like x to the power 4 plus y to the power 4 where we actually know that 0 0 is a global minimum not just a local minimum it is actually a global minimum because it is a bowl which is a uh, x square plus y square is more like this x to the power 4 plus y to the power 4 is more like this. Uh, so, it goes up faster 0 0 is a global minimum, but the test is inconclusive. Okay. So, these are the four prototypes of, uh, of uh, uh, corresponding to each of the cases that uh, you can remember and if you remember these you will know uh, uh, instead of by hearting the uh, cases from here you can recall which which case tells you what okay let's do a couple of other examples so this is x squared plus 6xy plus 4y squared plus 2x minus 4y so let's find the gradient here these are slightly more involved so 2x plus 6y plus 2 comma um, 6y sorry 6x plus 8y minus 4. So, if you set the gradient to 0, uh, so equating to 0, uh, we get the critical point. We have actually done this before. So, I, I would not uh, spend time here on this. So, we get the critical point 2 comma minus 1. So, this is something that we uh, we did in the video on critical points. So, I, I would not uh, repeat this computation you get a system of two linear equations in x and y and which you can solve. So, we used a Gaussian elimination to solve that fine. Uh, so, now let us ask what is the nature of this critical point is it a saddle point is it a local minimum is it a local maximum can we say that from the test. So, for that we have to find the hessian matrix first. So, what is the hessian matrix? So, you have 2 x plus 6 y plus 2 let us take the partials with respect to x and y. So, with respect to x you get 2 with respect to y you get 6. So, 6 x plus 8 y minus 4 the partial with respect to x is 6 with respect to y is 8 and again this hessian does not depend on any point. So, at 2 comma minus 1 also it is the same uh, matrix. Let us compute its determinant. So, determinant of h f of 2 comma minus 1 is uh, uh, 8 times 2 16 minus 6 times 6 is 36. Uh, so, 16 minus 36 is minus 20 which is negative. So, this tells us that 2 comma 1 is a saddle point. Of f x y. So, let us view this function in GeoGebra and check uh, exactly what is happening at 2 comma minus 1. So, here is the function f x y is uh, uh, x squared plus 6 x y plus uh, uh, 4 y squared plus 2 x minus 4 y. Uh, so, you can see that uh, uh, there is indeed something interesting going on here it looks like a function looks quite nice actually and uh, if we view it like this let us see what is happening at the point 2 comma minus 1. So, here is the point 2 comma minus 1 and you can see right above the point 2 comma minus 1 there is that saddle. So, that saddle is coming at the uh, point 2 comma minus 1 and indeed we are uh, being able to 
detect that using the Hessian matrix. Okay, let us do this uh, second example which is f x y is x y minus x cube minus y squared. So, let us find the gradient. So, the gradient here is um, y minus 3 x squared comma um, x minus 2 y. So, if we sub equate this to 0, So, now we have two equations x is 2 y and y is 3 x squared. Uh, so, uh, let us substitute x is 2 y in, in the first equation. So, if we do that, so one okay, so one uh, point we already know it is 0 0. So, the list of critical points one point we already know 1 0 0. Let us see if there is any other point. So, for that we substitute Mm, x is 2 y in, in the first equation. So, we get y is equal to uh, 6 times mm, uh, 2 y ah, my bad 3 times 2 y squared uh, which is uh, 12 times y squared which means uh, y times uh, 1 minus 12 y is 0. So, one option is y is 0 that is exactly the point 0 comma 0 that corresponds to the point 0 comma 0. The other option is that y is not 0 in which case uh, 1 minus 12 y must be 0. So, which means uh, y must be 1 by 12 and if y is 1 by 12 then we can uh, 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 get x is 2 by 12. So, which is 1 by 6. So, this is 1 by 6 comma 1 by 12. So, there are uh, two critical points 0 0 and 1 by 6 comma 1 by 12. Let us check the nature of these critical points. So, for that we have to find the Hessian matrix. So, I, I will uh, take partials again. So, y minus 3 x squared uh, the partial with respect to x is minus 6 x with respect to y is 1 x minus 2 y partial with respect to x is 1 and partial with respect to y is minus 2. So, at the point 0 0 uh, this becomes uh, 0 mm, 1 1 and uh, minus 2. So, the determinant is negative. So, this is minus 1 which is less than 0 and that tells us it is a saddle point. So, therefore, 0 0 is a saddle point. The other critical point is 1 by 6 comma 1 by 12. Let us find out what the Hessian is. So, if I substitute 1 by 6 in, in the 1 1 th place I get minus 1. So, minus 1 1 1 minus 2. So, the determinant of the Hessian matrix is uh, 2 minus 1 which is 1. So, this is positive. So, we know this is either a local minimum or a local maximum and uh, for that it is determined by the 1 1 -th term. So, f x x mm, at uh, of 1 by 6 comma 1 by 12. So, that is a 1 1 -th term which is uh, this term here and that is minus 1 which is less than 0. So, therefore, 1 by 6 comma 1 by 12 is a local maximum. Okay. Let us see in GeoGebra if uh, this is indeed what is happening. So, this is how the uh, graph of the function looks like in GeoGebra and you can see at 0 0 it, it really has uh, very interesting behavior. Uh, and that it is clearly a saddle point. So, if we zoom in, let us see if I can come close to 0 0. Yeah. So, at 0 0 you can see uh, at if you take the take it along the green line, then the function values it is like this. So, it is a local maximum whereas, if you take it al along the um, the other axis uh, it is 
it is decreasing like this, increasing a little and then it again goes down. So, uh, it is a local minimum along that. So, indeed it, it is like a saddle point, although it, it looks a bit different than the standard saddle, which is a little more uh, uh, clear to, to see, but it is clear that at 0 0 something strange happens. The more interesting point is 1 by 6 comma 1 by 12, that is a bit hard to pick up from the graph. Uh, so, here is that point, it is a bit difficult to see, but let us zoom in further and maybe we can see what is happening. Ah, so, now we can see this point, here is here is the point B which is 1 by 6 comma 1 by 12 and you can see that close to this point, the function is indeed uh, sort of positive. So, it is coming down, remember at uh, before 0 0 from the on, on the other side it was coming down, but then just for a brief period it it kind of goes up again and then it goes down and that is what uh, is being picked up by our hessian matrix over there okay so this uh, this indeed conforms to to our understanding of uh, what is happening yeah so maybe here one can see yeah here okay so you can see from the graph it may not be very easy to pick up these points but the algebra tells you what is happening and uh, even from the function directly the the equation of the function it is not clear uh, why this is a um, uh, local maximum, but, but the second order test is going to the Hessian test is going to tell you that indeed it is a local maximum. Let us do this last example of f of x y sin of x y. So, we have computed the gradient for sin of x y which uh, let us write that down again. Uh, this was y times cosine x y comma x times cosine x y. In fact, we also wrote down the Hessian. The Hessian was um, minus y squared sin of x y, uh, then the other diagonal term is minus x squared sin of x y and then the off diagonal terms were slightly more complicated. So, cosine of x y minus x y times sin of x y and then the same thing over here by Clairaut's theorem or by computation. Okay, so, this is how our Hessian matrix looks like. So, first what are the critical points? Uh, so, we actually know for this function what is happening, right. We have seen a graph of this function and uh, several times and we know what is happening for this function because the, the local uh, maxima or minima are actually global maxima or minima and they are given by when the function, this is a sine function. So, it takes the value 1 and minus 1 respectively. So, when does it take the value 1? When x times y is of the form pi by 2 plus uh, k times 2 pi, where uh, k is an integer. So, for all such points, the function takes the value 1. So, the value 1 will be taken whenever x times y attains one of those values. So, it is it is a it is curves and we have actually seen this picture we will see it again and similarly uh, when does it take the value minus 1 when it is of the form uh, 3 pi by 2 plus k times 2 pi where k is an integer again and again that is a curve and uh, on, on those points it, it takes value minus 1 and the only other point which ends up being a critical point uh, is the following. So, let us equate so equating gradient to 0 we get. So, two things can happen. One is cosine of x y is 0, the other is if cosine of x y is not 0, then both x and y should be 0. right? So, cosine of x y is, is 0 is exactly the set of points that I just said. So, cosine of x y is 0 means that sin of x y is plus or minus 1, because we know that sin squared plus cosine squared is 1. So, this is the same as saying that sin of x y is plus or minus 1. So, plus 1 is exactly the set of local global in fact maxima and uh, minus 1 is exactly the set of global minima. So, we know actually what happens at all these points. So, these are points that we are already understand. Uh, what happens at x is equal to y is equal to 0? So, this is this is the point that we do not know what happens. Uh, well, it is fairly clear that this, this is probably not a point of local maximum or local minimum. So, most likely this is a saddle point 
and let us see if our hessian is telling us that. So, if you if we compute our hessian what do we get? So, hessian at 0 0. So, I should say hessian at 0 0 uh, well substitute x is by 0. So, the diagonal entries become 0 what happens to the off diagonal entries? Well, x y times sin x y becomes 0. So, the only contributing term is cosine of x y that is cosine of 0 when x is y is 0 and cosine of 0 we know is 1. So, this is the matrix we get this implies determinant of uh, this matrix. So, sometimes this is called the hessian determinant this is minus 1 and that tells us that uh, 0 0 is a saddle point for this function. Okay. So, the, the point that was sort of un, we were unsure of what happened the test told us it is a saddle point. Let us see what happens for those points for which we are sure of what happens. Okay. Let us see what happens to points where uh, of this form where cosine of x y is 0 or sin of x y is plus or minus 1. So, for points such that cosine x y is 0, let us compute the hessian. So, uh, so as I said there are two, two options either sin of x y is 1 or sin of x y is minus 1. Let us say sin of x y is 1. Okay. So, there are two options. So, I will say this or this and we will see what happens in both cases. So, if uh, sin of x y is 1 then gives this gives me minus y squared uh, minus x y minus x y minus x squared and if uh, sin of x y is minus 1 then this gives me uh, y squared uh, x squared x y and x y. So, I will just reiterate that this is if uh, sin of x y is 1 and this is if sin of x y is minus 1. And uh, what happens to the determinant? So, it, so, suppose uh, we compute the determinant. So, the hessian determinant well you can see what is happening. This is x squared y squared minus x squared y squared which is actually 0. So, this test is inconclusive even though we actually know what is happening at these points and the same thing happens here. This is also 0 x squared y squared minus x squared y squared. So, the point of this example is to say that the hessian test is a is a uh, uh, has uh, several features to it and uh, what can happen is that points where it is obvious that there are local maxima or local minima it may end up being inconclusive whereas points that we actually don't know what's happening from from the function it gives us a result so such things can happen so uh, the hessian test is uh, uh, is a it is not a foolproof test, but it is our first step towards understanding critical points. Uh, so, we have studied the Hessian test in this video for f x y, we will study this in, in the forthcoming video for uh, more number of variables. Thank you.